Let's talk about slope fields. Um, these are methods for graphically analyzing differential equations of a certain sort. So we'll start with the differential equation dy dx equals x minus y. And the first thing we'll notice about this is it's not separable, which is really too bad since separability is a nice condition if you want to have a shot at solving it by integrating. But the good news is this differential equation is really a statement about the tangent slope. In fact, it says dy dx equals x minus y. It's giving you the tangent slope of any function as a function of x and y. So we should be able to leverage this information. For example, if you chose the point 0, 0, uh, dy dx, according to this differential equation, should be 0. So what does this imply? We're going to put a little segment at the origin with slope 0, and we'll notice that any graph of a solution that goes through the origin has to be tangent to that little segment because the formula, the derivative, the, the differential equation tells you that dy dx has to be x minus y, which is 0 there. So a solution might look like this, maybe it looks like this, maybe it looks like this, but in any case, it's got to go through the origin tangent to that little segment. Now, that's not really enough information to whittle down the possibilities. So what we should do is try to get more information by looking at other points. So at 1, 0, for example, the formula would tell you the tangent slope has to be 1. So we'll put in a small segment of slope 1 at that point and continue. We'll pick a few more points. So 0, 1, the slope has to be negative 1 at that position. And we'll do one more at 2, comma 1 the derivative would be 1. So we're going to draw these slopes in, and now let's, let's pull back one of the possibilities I graphed earlier. So that guy, we could rule that out as a candidate for a solution. It's okay at the origin, but you can see right here at the point 2, 1, it sort of slashes through. It's got to be tangent there, so that can't possibly be a solution. So you get the picture. You can sort of, um, the, the more of these small slopes you can include, the better idea you have of what a solution looks like. So this is definitely not a job to do by hand. You want a computer or software to do it, but there are particular equations for which you can shrewdly figure out the slope field by hand. This is one of them. You'll notice that all along the line y equals x, the quantity x minus y of course must be zero, which means dy dx is zero. So all along this line we can fill in small segments that are horizontal because dy dx is zero all along that line. And we could say look at the line y equals x plus one and using similar reasoning we would find that dy dx has to be negative one all along that line. And moving along to any particular line you can play the same game. So along the line x minus one dy dx winds up having to equal one all along that line and so on. And you can keep reproducing these slopes and pretty quickly you realize that your slope field looks something like this. Now, now we have a really good picture and the motto here is that the graph of a solution must go with the flow. So these little segments indicate where tangents point as you move through the field. So a solution might look something like this or this and so on and you get better with this over time trying to sketch possible solutions but the key is you never want one of your solutions to slash through one of the slopes you've drawn you always want to go with the flow now without performing any calculations to speak of i mean we just were adding some numbers and subtracting some simple integers and you've got a pretty good idea of what solutions look like graphically that's pretty impressive but we can even squeeze more out of this problem because there's one particular guy that looks intriguing here, it really looks like the line y equals x minus 1 is a solution. And we can check that with not much trouble because we can, if we take y equals x minus 1 and take the derivative, you just get dy dx equals 1. On the other hand, simple algebra tells you that 1 is equal to x minus y all along that line. These two expressions are of course the same, so yes, y equals x minus 1 is indeed a solution. So we were sort of led to, we were inspired by the slope field to even guess what one of the solutions was, and we had no way of attacking the original problem uh, using separation of variables or any other method. Let's look at three examples of slope fields and make some observations about what kinds of behaviors you might be seeing. 
So here's, a, here's an equation, dy dx equals y minus 1. And the thing you'll notice here is the, uh, the formula for dy dx is, is a function of y only, and there's no dependence on x. And this is reflected in the slope field in that the slope that we draw is the same along each horizontal line, since the x-coordinate is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is the y-coordinate. So the slopes change as a function of y, they stay the same as a function of x, and that kind of generic behavior might be able to allow you to pick one slope field out of a roster to attach to another equation. A similar thing happens when dy dx is only a function of x. If there's no dependence on y, then of course the slope is, along, is the same along each vertical line, since y coordinate is irrelevant, and then your slope is only a function of x, the horizontal displacement from the x-axis. So here's a third example, which is obviously more complicated, dy dx equals x squared minus y squared. We've used some software to generate the slopes, but we could analyze this. It's worth analyzing a little bit what's going on here. So one question is, when is dy dx equal to zero? So we set x squared minus y squared equal to zero, factor, and solve for y, and you realize that the line y equals x and y equals negative x provide the location of all the spots where the tangent slopes are horizontal. And that seems to agree with our picture. We could pick another value of dy dx, when is x squared minus y squared equal to 1, and you should recognize that equation as the equation of a hyperbola. And we sketch that hyperbola, and it seems plausible that the slopes anywhere along that hyperbola appear to be 1. Now, not many slopes are right anchored at the parabola, but it seems reasonable, and you can play the same game with dy dx equals negative 1, and you get the equation of another hyperbola. And pretty much all along that hyperbola, you can sort of tell that the slopes at those points are negative 1. Now, all of this becomes a little more clear when you get a higher resolution. So we've plotted more slopes, and we, we kept the hyperbolas, and you can see that anywhere along the green hyperbola, the slopes are 1. Anywhere along the purple hyperbola, the slopes are negative 1. And along the dashed blue lines, the slopes are all 0. Now, please do not confuse these curves with actual solution curves. These are meant to be curves where the slopes are the same and a solution curve has to go with the flow, so to speak, so this would be an example of a typical solution curve.